Now, any of y'all who like really old classic patterns that are very versatile, I think you're gonna like the one we got today. Welcome back everybody. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now the pattern I'm talking about was created by a guy named Frank Hornberg. He was a game warden in central Wisconsin. He came up with a pattern sometime in the 1920s. Now the pattern's really versatile because he originally created it as a dry fly, but it has evolved over the years to be a wet fly and even a streamer. Now as a dry fly, I'm not sure exactly what this thing is meant to imitate because it's a pretty big bug. It's the, the smallest you ever see it on is a size 10, and then a little bit bigger, maybe up to a size six as a streamer. But I did read that lots of folks will tie it as a caddis imitation, but here on the East Coast, we don't have any caddis flies as big as a 10, so I'm not really sure what it would imitate here as a dry fly. And I think here on the East Coast or the Mid-Atlantic, it would probably be fish as a wet fly or a small streamer. But for any of you who do fish this regularly, uh, leave us a comment. Let us know where you fish it and how you fish it. I'd love to know. Now, it's not a hard pattern at all to tie. There are five materials. It's got a silver tinsel for a body, then yellow calf tail for an underwing, which I did read you could substitute bucktail for it or, or various other colors of calf tail if you need to, and then mallard flank wings on the side. And they're really oversized. They're almost twice as long as the hook shank. Then you got some jungle cock eyes that are pretty long as well. And then the front is either a grizzly hackle or a grizzly and brown hackle. Now this is not at all a forgotten fly. In fact, it's really popular and shows up in a lot of books today. But it's a really cool looking pattern and it was a lot of fun to tie. I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a true classic pattern, the Hornberg. Now this is a size 10 and that's what you'll see a lot of them tied on. It's a 1x long dry fly hook. Now, if you were tying this as a streamer, yeah, you could probably go a little bigger. I would say no bigger than a six. And I don't think you can go much smaller than this just by the, you know, the size of the, some of the feathers we're putting on it. So I'm using black 70 denier and I'm gonna just catch it in right up here at the front. And the first thing I'm gonna catch in silver tinsel. Mylar tinsel and a silver. I'm going to catch it up the front. Let's see right here. The silver side is toward the hook. There's a few wraps right there and then I'll leave my thread where I'm going to catch it off. So flip it and then wrap. And this is a size 14 mylar tinsel. I tried it with a, a size 12 but I think it was just a little too big. So I'm not worried about these lap these wraps overlapping. I'm just gonna get them as close together as I can and go all the way back. Okay, now when you've got it far enough back, just start wrapping it back forward. Okay, now when you have a long enough body, let's just go ahead and catch this off a couple of wraps right here before we snip it. Now before we catch in this yellow calf tail, I'm gonna put a little wax on. This stuff can be a little bit slippery. It's not real hard to work with, but this isn't gonna hurt. So take a moderate size clump of this, and it's gonna be a little bit past the bend of the hook. Our feather's gonna be a lot bigger than, the, than that, but I think that right there is gonna work. And you might wanna go back just a little bit on this body because we've got a lot going on in front of this calf tail. Now, what do you do if you don't have yellow calf tail? Should you use something like yellow bucktail or yellow anything else? Well, I think maybe because part of the fly is this yellow color showing through the mallard flank we're about to tie on, but also there's nothing else that really acts like calf tail. So if I didn't have yellow calf tail, I would probably be tempted to just go with white, white calf tail, as opposed to a yellow bucktail. So I'm cutting that off at oh, a little bit of a taper. And before I go to the next component, I'm just gonna bind these in Try to get a smooth taper going down to the front of the hook. 
Okay, so we're a good third of the way back right there. My goal here is just to keep this smooth through the next few components because we're gonna be wrapping a hackle up on a good part of the front of the fly. So the next thing we wanna do, grab our mallard flank feathers and then pull them down to size. And if you have a bag like this, you're gonna to have to root through it to find a couple that are gonna work for you. And some of the ones you do find, they might have this big curve in it. This feather's not really usable for this. I suppose you could steam it and then lay it flat to dry, kind of press it, but you know, that's a lot of work. What I do is just look for a different one. So I found one right here that's gonna work. It doesn't have as much of a curve on it. So I'm gonna catch it in, you know, kind of right in the middle of the hook with half the feather above it and half the feather below it. And I'm trying to keep it in the plane of the hook. So I'll do a couple wraps right here, maybe three, but not really tight. I can still adjust it if I need to. So take a look at that. Is that still going up and down? Yeah, for the most part, I think it is. Take another one of the same size and we'll do that directly opposite right here. And these are pretty long. I should have mentioned at least twice as long as your hook shank. So I'm gonna put two fairly loose to medium wraps right there to check this side. Now, if I've got them in the plane of the hook, I'm good to go. So I'm gonna hold them tight and then just take some wraps, a couple of medium wraps up here. Now I can get them tighter as I go up. And what I'm gonna do, and this is how I saw Barry or Clark doing it, don't trim these off just yet. If I cut them off right there, I'm gonna have a little bit of a lump going down. So I'm going to, you know, just try to smooth this out, keep it smooth, and now cut these off right here. Okay, now I might spend a few other wraps just to let this, you know, keep that, I guess, underbody right there smooth. And we've got one more component before we tie in our hackle, and that's jungle cock eyes. So these little guys right here, now I know a lot of you don't have these, and there are imitation ones out there. So what do you do if you don't have a jungle cock? Because they are pretty hard to come by nowadays. Well, this is an imitation one, and this really doesn't look at all like this guy right here. So I think what you could do, you could take those or take some starling or something and some model paint and put a big old dab of yellow paint on the end, and that might work for you. I've never done it because I'm fortunate enough to have a jungle cock cape. But if anybody out there knows where you can get one, let us know in the comments because they are hard to come by right now. So I'm just catching that one in, kind of right in the middle, but pretty long. So just a couple of wraps so it's not really bound in just yet. Adjust my position to where I want it, maybe not that low. How about that right there? Okay, now I couple of tight wraps and we'll do the same thing on the near side. Okay, I think those look fine right there. And these jungle cock stems, they're very thin. So I am just going to leave them in, kind of like I did with that mallard flank, leave those stems in, and that helps keep that underbody smooth right there. Now I can snip them off up front. couple extra wraps, make sure I keep this smooth, and then get my thread right the back. Now, take some grizzly dry fly hackle. And, you know, size to match the hook, so I'm looking for one that's gonna be about a, a 10, and I think this is about it, just a little bit more than that hook gap right there. So I'll open this up, create a little tie-in point. Now, one thing I like to do, and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but I've stripped off the the fibers a little bit more of them on the far side. And I'm gonna catch it in with a concave side toward the hook, almost perpendicular. So one or two wraps right there. Now let's another wrap right behind it. So that is my perpendicular hackle right there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Just let that stem wrap forward and then trim it off up here at the front. 
and hopefully that little nub right there won't mess with our head. Okay, so maybe I'll just take a couple wraps and bury it. So where my thread is, a little bit back from the eye, that's probably where I want to stop wrapping this hackle. And how many wraps do you want? Really as many as you can get. It's pretty heavily hackled. And I might not have grabbed a long enough feather because I'm gonna run out of feather before I get up there, possibly. Maybe not. Almost, I don't have a whole lot to be grabbing here. Of course I could have used my hackle pliers, but sometimes I just forget or get a little bit lazy. Okay, so we've got that caught in with a couple wraps. I don't have any fibers going too far forward yet. So what I'm gonna do though, is just pull this back, take a few wraps right here, just to get me a flat spot and some room for my whip finish. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish it before I snip off that excess feather. And you might need to be a little careful here. Kind of pull a little bit of extra thread out and zigzag it through here a little bit, just so you won't trap any of these fibers going forward. And I think we pulled it off. Let's snip this thread, take care of that extra feather, and then see if we have any cleanup. Okay, I think we're fine. We've got a decent fishable fly. We've got a little bit of room there for a drop of head cement. But there you go, a very classic fly pattern. Could be a wet fly, could be a dry fly, even a streamer. I think most often a dry fly, but fish it however you'd like. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.